a fun little video today here at Blue Glow Electronics. This one's going to be on how to put a digital meter into a TV7DU or any other TV7 series tube tester. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, this is my personal tube tester and um, or one of mine and unfortunately the meter on this thing has uh, kind of gone flaky on me. And so I reached out to Daniel Nelson, who uh, is kind of the renowned expert on these units. And he sells something here uh, made by, it says, Hollow State Devices. It is a TV7 dual digital meter. So it not only does it do the digital display instead of the analog, meter, um, you know, the analog meter reading here that goes from 0 to 120, but it also has a button you can push here that will read plate current. And... Um, I thought I would show you how to install one of these and get it up and running and um, just tell you a little bit about the scenario. So Daniel, he sells these uh, and on his, uh, you know, uh, if you reach out to him, he'll tell you he only sells that if he installs it. So, um, but I was able to, uh, to talk him into selling me one. I told him I was competent and thought I could install it myself. So he sent me one with the instructions and I thought I would make this video so uh, hopefully other people could do it and convince him to sell them the meters as well without uh, having to have him install it. So let's go through the process. If nothing else, you'll learn a little bit about how the TV7 tube tester works um, and you'll learn whether you like this style meter or not. And if so, um, you could reach out to Daniel to see about either getting him to sell you one or sell you one installed, however that works out for you. So. Let's dive in. All right, with any TV7, uh, you know, work you do, you got to remove all these screws around the outer here. You got two on each side here, and then four across here, four across here, and I've already removed those. At that point, it's a matter of kind of grabbing a hold of the plate. I mean, the uh, the line adjust over here, and just getting your fingers around underneath of it, and then finally you'll get your hand under the other side, and you can lift this entire unit out at that point. At that point you get the unit out of the case and it's amazing. This unit uh, has the original schematic still down here on the inside. Um, but we're going to close this up and kind of get it out of the way over here. And then you're going to want to get your unit here up on the bench and we've got some work to do at that point. Um, let me see. Okay, since I've already mounted this meter, but this was all that was involved in removing the old one. There's two lug nuts here on the back that you would unscrew. And typically they have some wires connected to them. Just disconnect them. Sometimes these are soldered on. Um, and sometimes they're screwed on like this. Depending on the meter that was used and which company made them. And then you turn the unit around on its face like this. And there are three screws here. Um, one, two, three. You just remove those screws. And this unit then lifts straight out. And all I have done is drop this meter in at this point. And... Um, as you can see, it has lots of wires hanging from the back of it, and we're going to show you how to connect those up. Okay, the new meter here, on the back of it, uh, when you mount it down in here, has a little etched PC board that's been made. Um, looks like with a little transformer connected onto it. And coming out of it, there'll be a black wire uh, that's twisted, a gray and white wire that's twisted up, You'll also have a black and a little red wire coming out of it. And you just mount that down in um, where the other meter kind of came in from the front side there. I did have to, let me show you this. I did have to loosen um, a few screws along the way. Um, so this one here, this one here, uh, and I think this one here, um, to be able to kind of pull back this chassis here just a little bit to get this thing down in here and then you were able to push it back up there and close it up and you can see these these two wires right here were the original two wires that connected to uh, the meter and that's the um, I had a hundred microfarad um, 63 volt Phillips capacitor that went across that thing from when I had calibrated this thing a while back so, at this point, and you can also see the bathtub capacitor here that's still in place. This was the original 100 microfarad at 15 working volts, and these things are notorious for going out, and this, I had replaced it with this. So, you can kind of see that's what came off the original, and then these are all the new wires here coming off the, the new meter. 
So these are the instructions that came along with the meter and I'll tell you here to work on the AU, uh, the U, the B, the C, the D. And here's kind of what it says uh, that we're going to do. We're going to remove the TV7 from the case, which we've done. We've unwound the cord, removed the 12 screws around the edge, turn it upside down, lift the case off, clean the debris from the inside. We remove the existing meter by removing the three screws, clip the red and white black stripe wire from the meter, clip the red and white black stripe wire from the capacitor, remove the old meter, you may leave the capacitor or remove it either way. So basically what they're saying at this point is you've got this red, I mean this um, white and black stripe wire you can see right here. We're going to snip it off here. And then we've also got this red wire here. And originally these two wires would have connected down to this bathtub capacitor right here. And then there were two wires that went from the bathtub capacitor up to the meter. And I had already kind of bypassed that and put this in place. I'll save that for another meter restoration one day. And then what it tells you to do here is you basically need to connect the red to the red. So we need to solder these together and put some heat shrink tubing on it. And we've got to connect the white and black stripe here that you can see to the black and solder those together and put some heat shrink tubing together. Um, Daniel actually provides you with, um, if you needed them here, just some little um, wire nuts here that you could twist those on with. He also provides you with a set of new um, black three screws for your meter if you needed them. Uh, but I'm going to go the solder and heat shrink route on this. Okay, as you can see, I've got both these soldered together now. It's just a matter of uh, like I'm doing here, sliding the heat shrink tubing up and over. And uh, same here on this one, get the heat shrink tubing up and over. And then what we'll do is use the heat shrink gun to uh, seal those up. Okay, at that point they're all sealed up here. And I'm just going to tuck those down and out of the way at this point in time. Um, because they will not be needed anymore in this process. And really all you have done at this point is um, replace the meter on this unit. So. Um, other than you're going to have to get power to this meter because it's a digital meter, um, pretty much you have um, you connected the meter um, connections at this point that would have been replaced on, on this. Okay, at this point you've got really two wires left. You've got this uh, gray and white and you've got this uh, black twisted pair right here that goes up to this little power supply is what this actually is to power the digital meter. And the way this is going to work, you're going to want to leave some slack up here on this end and kind of tuck it away. That way if you ever need to pull the meter out from the front to service it or anything, um, you'd have a little bit of slack in your system. And what you're going to want to do then is you're going to want to, and you're going to keep it away from the tube up here. So you'll have to figure out how to kind of route it down in there and give yourself a little slack. But you're going to want to kind of tag it to this existing um, kind of uh, this wiring harness along here. So we'll zip tie this thing off. And then you're going to want to bring this black one around underneath the transformer over here. And you're going to bring it around to the other side and you're going to connect it in two places. You're going to connect it right here on number 19. Um, down bottom is the very end one here, red. And you're going to go up here to number 37, which is the uh, white and black stripe here on the other end. Um, and they're marked along here. You can read the numbers. And if you look at the transformer on the top here, it'll tell you that 19 is 0 volts. And it's all, all these windings on one side here and that 37 is 150 volts here. So we're going to be feeding some AC to this little power supply via this wire. And then what this wire is going to do is it's going to go down here to the plate rotary switch and there is a resistor on the side of this red little switch, I mean uh, the rotary switch. And what we're going to do is basically get in series with that re resistor and that's going to let us read the plate current um, when you push the button, put, push button number three on this thing, it put, brings this rotary switch into action and the plate current flows through that and this will be in series with that so ultimately then you'll be able to read the plate current up here. So if you think about the connections, it, one set to the meter, one set to the power supply here, um, to the transformer, and then one set to jump in series with the uh, plate current reading. 
Just to read along with Daniel's instructions, route the twisted wire, power, the pair of wire and connect the power supply wires. The two twisted black pair, pair of wires should be routed along the existing wiring harness. The black twisted pair is routed to the power transformer. The gray and white twisted pair will connect to the plate rotary switch. Use cable ties to route the twisted wires along the wiring harness. Keep it away from the tubes and rotary switches. Keep as much slack at the meter end in case you want to remove it from the panel. Okay, then we've got um, route the twisted wires around the transformer above the rotary switch and at the top. The wires will be soldered to existing lugs on the transformer. Solder one wire to lug 19, one to lug 37. Connect the current sense twisted pair to the plate rotary switch. Let's do all these up to number 37 first. By the way, in Daniel's little kit, he provides you all of the little um, strip ties you'll need as well to zip these things off to the heart wiring harness. Okay, as you can see here, I've kind of routed it up a little bit, given it some slack in the system down through here, brought it around, and then I've zip tied it right here. Zip tied it right here. Now I'm going to feed underneath the transformer here, come to the other side and solder, solder this uh, wire on as it comes off on the other side here. Okay, the first wire I brought up here and soldered to this lug. And then the next wire, as you can see, I kind of brought up through here, soldered it on this lug, and then I kind of zip tied this off here in the middle. Okay, then connect the current sense twisted pair to the plate rotary switch. The white gray twisted pair should be routed to the area at the top of the plate of the rotary switch. Uh, let's flip this around so you can see here. If you'll notice right here, this says plate, it's the second one over right here. And then if you flip it back around, it will be this one here in the middle. And what it says is write this, route that gray wire around and get it over here. So we'll kind of take this up and over. We'll feed it into the harness and then we'll bring it down over here. And then what it says here is that the, the wiper of the plate rotary switch must have the orange wire and resistor desoldered. So let's look at that. All right, right here on the switch, you can see at the top here, you've got an orange wire that I'm lifting up right here. And it comes to this binding post right here. And then you can see it's connected to this resistor right down here. It's a little hard to see. But I've replaced the original factory carbon uh, resistor with a modern flame-proof resistor here at some point in time on this unit. So this is the wire and the resistor that have to be disconnected right here. What it says is the um, use the enclosed solder wick. So he even gives you a piece of solder wick to help desolder. After cleaning off the solder, free the wire end and the resistor end. If the resistor is a half watt carbon resistor, it's a good idea to replace it. These things are notorious kind of for going out. It's one of the top issues with TV7s. Also look at the grid rotary switch and screen rotary switch to see if these have the small half watt carbon resistors. They need to be replaced as well as they are easily cooked. It's tedious work, but try not to melt the wires adjacent. Three one watt metal oxides are enclosed for this task as needed. Do not resolder the resistor to the top of the plate rotary switch. So these have already been done at some point here. I can show you. Um, you can see the little resistor I've got here on the side of this one, the side of this one, and you can see this one up here. I've replaced all three of those at some point in time in the past. Okay, at this point you can see here I've unsoldered the orange wire and I've unsoldered the end of my resistor. So what it says here, attach a small terminal strip to the plate rotor switch at the top interior of the terminal screw. It's the one that bolts the whole stack together. Arrange the terminal so that it hangs outside the switch. Use the lock washer and nuts supplied. Then solder the white wire and resistor to an unused terminal and solder the orange wire and gray wire to the plate switch wiper terminal. The orange wire goes back where it was basically. And so um, really all you're doing here, and I'll show you, is inserting this meter in series in between the resistor and the orange wire here. Okay, as you can see now I use the supplied nut and washer here, and I've just mounted this little terminal strip. All you're doing is giving you a place to tie off to over here. And then let's mount the wires as, it's, as explained. What I've found here is the resistor that I used before uh, is just too short now. 
um, to reach all the way over to the terminal strip. So I'm going to go ahead and use the resistor that Daniel provided here so that I'll have a longer lead left on to it. I had originally, um, let's see here, I have more, I have much more lead to work with here. I had snipped this one off after done, um, being done last time, but I'm going to need this extra length uh, at this point. This is the easiest way I've found to put these resistors in. So you go about a quarter inch down from the resistor and then you make a bend and then you can see here I've kind of turned that bend this way. And then it's just a matter of uh, kind of dropping this resistor down in here, holding it by the other end, kind of putting it on to the lead of the old resistor down there. And then you can just solder that in place and it makes a good connection. Okay, hopefully you can see this here. You've got the resistor I soldered in down here. It comes up. I used some um, some Teflon PTFE um, wire cover here, which by the way Daniel included. And I brought it up here and I had to bend this over just a little bit. But I've soldered the resistor now to that spot. And then you can see the wiring. I've kind of brought this white and gray wire as part of that harness now. And I brought it over here and I've soldered the white wire onto this terminal as well. So you've got the resistor and the white wire going to this terminal. And now we've got to come back over here to this original place and get the white wire and the gray wire back in place. And you can see the gray wire here and the orange wire here now connect back to where the orange wire was originally. So it's resistor and white wire to this terminal point and gray wire and orange wire back to the original point. We're actually done at this point, believe it or not. Um, however, let, let's turn it over and check it out. Okay, we've got the whole unit up on the bench now. We power it on, if you'll notice. Um, we've got our unit sitting here with uh, zero volts on it, and everything's lit up. You can hit the line adjust button, and what you'll adjust that to is to 60. That is the... Uh, well, the way this meter actually works. So it's halfway, so it says line adjust here at 60. Let's get a calibration tube, make sure this thing's still in calibration. By the way, after I made my last video on how to calibrate a TV7, um, I've had people reaching out to me. They basically said, hey, they can't find anyone to sell them a set of calibration tubes. Apparently, um, Daniel Nelson's not selling them anymore, and um, I don't know where else you would get them, so I, I started making up sets of these, and um, I put them up on eBay. It's just basically the three tubes you need. Um, the tubes themselves, it's probably $20 or less worth of tubes, but it, you know, you got some time in actually matching them, making the labels, printing them off, packaging them, whatnot. So if you're interested in a set of these, I'm selling them up there on eBay now. Um, and so we're going to put the six L6 in and uh, see if this thing's calibrated or not. Okay, we've let the tube warm up for a few minutes now. We hit the line adjust, and um, as you can see here, I got it on 60. About as close as you're going to get it. And um, then we push the mutual conductance button, and we get 49.2, 49.1. And if you'll notice here, this thing should be 43. So changing this meter affects um, you know the the um, the movement itself in this versus the uh, the analog meter could be slightly different you know uh, this is 200 microamps per full scale and maybe it was off and now this is right or maybe this is off a little bit either way you can calibrate that out um, so I've got another video on how to calibrate your tube tester um, so you wouldn't if you change this meter out you're highly likely needed to recalibrate your tester and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go through and recalibrate this unit um, and I actually like this. Now you can uh, you kind of push three here and you press and hold this button and it'll actually give you the um, the plate current reading here of 47 milliamps on this thing. So um, pretty cool. This is this is very handy for matching tubes. So instead of matching matching mutual trans conductance, you're actually matching plate current pulled with a given set of parameters at that point. So a um, much better way of matching tubes. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to go back and uh, calibrate this thing. But uh, if you need to figure out how to do that, I've got another video on that topic. I've also created an entire little section on my website at blueglow.net 
on how to calibrate your TV7 tube tester. So the instructions are there, and we've got an hour and a half video that can walk you through it. Thanks for watching, everyone.